My name is Dr. O'Hanley. I'm a senior lecturer in the Kent Business School. My area of specialty is optimization. So what is optimization? It is a field of applied mathematics. It's primarily used in business. Uh, it's, uh, the idea is usually to maximize profits, minimize costs. It's used in logistics, manufacturing, all sorts of different industries. What I'm going to do is talk about how it can be used in the public sector, in particular by the National Blood Service. So blood, what is it good for? Uh, well, everybody's very familiar with blood collection, donation. Uh, it's very, uh, the, what most people think of is maybe say trauma. You go into the A&E and you've had an accident and they need to give you a blood transfusion. That's fine, that's one common area. Another one is people get sick, uh, in particular, say sickle cell anemia, where they need transfusions quite frequently, or even say cancer, where they need blood transfusions. So the National Blood Service is the organization that is tasked with collecting blood, and they cover England and Wales. And they need to collect lots and lots of blood every day, probably about 8,000 units. A unit is about a pint of blood, so they need to collect lots and lots of blood and they're under a lot of pressure because there's a very small supply of people who actually want to go and donate, but then they have a very large demand for blood. So this puts a lot of pressure on the organization and they need to be as efficient as possible. So blood donors, how does that work? Well, blood donors in England and Wales, they're all volunteer uh, uh, donors. In other countries, they actually sometimes get paid to donate blood uh, donors. In the UK, they, uh, men can go and donate every 12 weeks, women every 16 weeks. And so the uh, National Blood Service will go and collect this blood. They will then effectively sell it on to hospitals at a price of about 125 pounds per unit. So blood really has some value to them. And how does this whole procedure work? Well, they've got a system of panels and venues. So panels are really just geographic areas where donors are grouped into. Now, typically it's where you live, okay? But it doesn't have to be the case. Maybe you work in a certain area and you decide to join that particular panel. Now, the key thing about panels is that they vary qu uh, quite considerably in terms of geographic area and more importantly, in terms of the number of donors. So you got some panels with large amounts of donors, some panels with very small number of donors. So we've got our panels, and then within those panels, we've got these things called venues. Venues are basically just locations where donors can go and then donate blood. Now, there's three types of venues, typically. You've got fixed venues. They're very rare in England and Wales. They're just dedicated sites where they collect blood. They're more common in very large cities. Second kind you have are temporary venues. These are typically uh, church halls, uh, school halls, that sort of thing, where you can go and uh, donate blood. Third one, blood mobiles. These are trucks that are designed to go around to different areas, park, maybe say in a parking lot, and then donors can go in and donate blood. So that's my local uh, temporary venue. Uh, this is the Westgate Hall down in Canterbury. I go and donate blood down there. And a blood mobile. That's a typical blood mobile, okay? And they can vary in size. So what is the National Blood Service's problem? Their problem is, is they need to go and locate venues. They need to pick out venues to run over a given planning horizon. In our case, it's going to be 40 weeks. So they want to figure out which uh, sessions to run. And then secondly, they also need to figure out how they can allocate their donors to these venues to collect blood. And the key thing they want to do is they want to do this at minimum cost. Our particular approach is we're going to use optimization because that's what I do. And what is an optimization? Optimization is we're going to figure out how many, we're going to optimize it, we're going to minimize their cost by figuring out exactly when to run the sessions and how to allocate their donors. One thing to be clear about an optimization model, there's always four key ingredients. You've got your data, you've got your variables, you've got your objective, and you've got your constraints. So data, this is the stuff that's given to us. This could be stuff like costs, the number of donors in each panel, that sort of thing. This is stuff that I have no control over, it's just given to me. I also have stuff called variables. These are the, the decisions that I get to make. So in my particular case, it might be when to run donation sessions. 
and how do I allocate a donor to the session? Those sorts of things. My objective, that's the third ingredient. Objective is what do I want to achieve? Well, in my particular case, I want to minimize costs, and we'll go into that. I also have a fourth ingredient, which is constraints. And these are the requirements I have to fulfill. And an example might be that I need to meet a certain amount of demand for blood. So I have to collect so much of type B negative blood over a given week. So let's look at it. I've got these types of uh, particular variables. So I've got temporary venues. I've got to figure out when and where to locate them. I have my same thing for blood mobile locations. I have how many male, female registered donors to assign to a particular session. And then I also need to figure out how many walk-ins to accept. Now, walk-ins are unregistered donors that just show up, and I could decide to take them or not. And there's some other types of variables that I can have as well. So what's my objective? Well, my objective, as I said, is we're going to minimize costs. And there's several portions to the cost. There's my fixed cost, so the cost of renting out maybe a particular venue and paying my staff. I have some variable costs associated with collecting the blood. Okay? So I've got to process the blood, and that's going to be my variable cost. I'm going to pay it for each unit of blood that I collect. I've also got some penalties for not meeting the demand for blood. So let's say my target for B negative blood is 1,000 units for a particular week, and I only get 500. Well, I'm going to go and pay a penalty. Constraints. Well, there's lots and lots of them. I'm not going to go into them in too much detail, but I've got limits, say, on the number of crews available to run uh, donation sessions. So I've only, I can only run so many sessions in one go. I've got limits on number of blood mobiles. Again, I only have so many vehicles at hand. I've got limits on number of sessions that can be run at temporary venues. So if you think about a week, there's only so many sessions available, blocks of time that I can run a session at a particular site. Those are sort of my constraints. I've got lots of other constraints. I've got limits on donor capacity. So these venues, they only have a certain amount of size. There's only so many donors I can process through a particular site. Other ones, limit on walk-in donors. This is typically for uh, logistic reasons that they don't want to run a session and hope that a whole bunch of walk-ins show in. So you usually want to require that a certain minimum number of registered donors are there. And I've got stuff on that I need to meet my demand for blood. That's one of the really key ones that I need to meet. And I've got donation on how frequently people can donate. This is eventually what you end up developing. This is an actual optimization model. And I can see by the look on everybody's face that this is perfectly clear to everybody. Now, as I said, actually, if you think about it, this does, if you break it down, it does make sense. Remember how I said there's four ingredients? Well, things like this. You've got these little things, Fs and Cs and alphas. Those are my data. That's the stuff that's given to me. In particular, those Fs are my fixed costs. The C's is my variable cost for blood, and that alpha is a very special thing, that thing on the far right there. That's the uh, likelihood that donors are actually going to show up when invited. Unfortunately, mine is not as good as it should be. I've got things, again, I've got my variables. Those are these X's, Y's, and Z's. I've got my objective, which, again, if you break it down, this is my costs. It's a combination of fixed costs, variable costs, and penalty costs. Again, I've also got my constraints. So what does all of this do for me? This is really what it boils down to. Optimization can really make a huge difference for an organization. If we look on the far left, this is the current schedule that the National Blood Service uses, and this is for the area of Kent. Now, it's composed of two main sections. There's that red part, which is my variable cost, and there's that green part, which is my penalty cost. That little blue bit down at the bottom, those are my fixed costs. So I'm not paying a lot of fixed costs. I'm paying some variable costs for the blood. That's fine, because I want to collect blood. I don't mind really paying that sort of thing. That green bit up on the top, that's, that's problem. They are not meeting the demand for blood, and they're paying a huge amount of penalty for that. Let's contrast that with the bars in the middle. That is, I take the venues that the National Blood Service already uses, and I just simply re-optimize the way donors are allocated to the venues. And we can see that I really make a huge difference on that penalty. It goes way down. It's very hard to see now, that little green bit at the top. So that's great. I can really meet my demand very easily. I could even really go for it and try and re-optimize everything. I can re-optimize my locations and the way donors are allocated to my venues, and that's on the far right. And it makes a marginal amount of difference.
that's fine. So why is this the case? Well, if you actually go and look in detail at the current schedule for the National Blood Service, they are, have lots and lots of under collection. That's those bars on the top. And they have lots of over collection. Those are the bars on the bottom. So they're going over and under collecting. And that's actually a big problem for the National Blood Service. They need to try and spread this stuff out. Let's contrast that with where I go and re-optimize the way donors are allocated. We can see that there's a little bit of under collection in a few periods, but more or less, I'm hitting my demand targets in every single week. That's really, really good. So what are the key conclusions from all this? Well, there's, I'd say there's two big ones. One is that we can potentially make some big operational savings by using optimization. We can really, in fact, get rid of that big penalty charge by doing smarter decision making. Another key thing that we can go and do is we can start trying to address key policy questions. Among them could be the following. What would be the impact of doing a shorter donation cycle? As I said, it's 12 weeks for men, 16 weeks for women. What if we go and shrink that? Fine, we will be able to collect more blood, but what is the actual impact of that in terms of meeting my targets? Another one, pay donors. As I said, in some countries, they pay donors. What would be the impact of that? Is that going to be cost effective? Again, we can try and extend the optimization model to try and address that kind of question. Third policy question we could try and address, the panel system itself. One possibility is to get rid of it entirely. Under this scenario, a donor could try and go to the venue near where they live, or they could maybe even go to a venue where they work. And that would free up a lot of uh, artificial constraints on the problem and that would allow for a more efficient collection of blood. So, taking a step back, I've shown exactly one example of how optimization can be used to make uh, blood collection more efficient. If we think about it, even just the healthcare area, optimization has a lot of other uses. You could consider uh, scenarios where it's being used to roster nurses for trying to figure out when and where they need to go to hospitals. You could also think about ambulance location. Where should I most efficiently locate my ambulances so that they can get to patients in the most speedy and efficient manner possible? So hopefully that gives you some idea of the type of things that optimization can do for you. Thank you very much for coming.